Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get life-changing jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience and no college degree. And that includes my very special guest today, Kashan, who is only 20 years old and is making $70,000 a year working fully remote as a paid search buyer. His story is incredible. Uh, I'm super excited to share it with you. Thanks for being here, Kishan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so a lot of you guys may recognize Kishan because I did interview him about seven months ago when he got his first job making $50,000 a year at age 20, which is already spectacular. But since then, he has leveled up, which is what I say you will do within about a year. Uh, so why don't you tell us about your current job and what are you making there? Um, my current job, I'm a paid search buyer and I'm making 70000 a year. That is, it's so incredible. I, you're 20 years old. Most people your age are either working like minimum wage jobs yeah. or they're building debt in college, learning nothing. Yeah. And you are earning what somebody in their 30s or 40s would be earning. Um, it's just incredible. It, it's it's life changing, honestly. It's, I. I don't need sometimes when I'm doing this, I can't even believe I actually am doing it. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense for someone my age. It does right. In a world that's crazy, <laughs> pushing young people into debt to learn nonsense, then you who did something very practical does seem crazy. I totally get that. Yeah. That's why, you know, I run the channel. That's why I do these interviews to show and hopefully inspire other young people to understand that there is a better, more lucrative, more fulfilling, and more enjoyable path. Uh, if you learn these marketable skills. So let's um, take people through the process. So first of all, you know, guys, if you want to see my first interview with Kayshawn, I, I put the link below this video because that's incredible. Because again, he talks about how he was working at, we, where were you working at? I was working you... at Chick-fil-A making $9 an hour. <laughs> that's wow. what I was doing. Yeah. Wow. $9 an hour. And that is in Georgia, right? Yes. I was in Georgia. And you're still in Georgia, right? Yeah, still here, still working remote. It's uh, still at home. It's it's insane. Yeah. So he was working. Um, why don't you give people just a quick summary of what happened, mm -hmm. how you went from working at Chick-fil-A to making okay. 50 a year in your first job? Well, I went through the course. And like you said, do everything within the course. So I went through the whole process, built my own website. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to work with somebody near me. I had to go the route of just building it myself and just utilizing everything uh, he put within it. Once I did all that, put my resume together, started applying. And just like you said, people, when you're looking for this entry level job, you don't have to know everything. When I got my first job, they literally trained me up like I knew nothing. And I knew most of the stuff they were talking about. So it was, it was insane. I was super nervous, super scared. So I was like, you feel like that that feeling of um like almost like a fraud even though you know what they're talking about and you know how to do it it's almost like it's a disconnect but when you actually get into it you get more comfortable so yeah yeah that's that's actually let's focus in on that because i know that's what a lot of people experience whether they're in my course or just in life i think they call it imposter syndrome that's yeah the, the popular term but just to just to sort of dig into what you said so yeah you you, you, you didn't know nothing. You knew a lot from the course. You understood the language, right? Like they were impressed with the, like, you know, yes, why, that was why the main they thing. Hired they hired me because when we were talking about Google ads and the, you know, the recent changes of how they were moving um, expanded text ads and just everything I knew about building out an account with proper structure, they understood I knew what I was doing. They just understood I knew the basics and that's why they were impressed. And they also were impressed by the fact that I just kept up on what uh, Google's changes were. Um, that's really what they were just looking for, someone who spoke the language and knew the basics, and then they could teach the more advanced stuff later. Preach, I mean, that's what I say. And if you watch these interviews back to back, you're gonna hear that again and again. So that, so they, and they hired you, and again, did you have a college degree? No, actually I wasn't 20, I was 19, about to turn 20 when they hired, hired me, so. They didn't care at all. They never asked me where my degree was. They just wanted to know what I knew about Google Ads. There you go, guys. I mean, it's so counter to what you're taught in school. I mean, you really, people really think you're going to be end up living in a van down by the river if you don't get an English degree. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll get more into the whole degree thing a little bit later. But now let's dig more um, back into the job itself. So you got the job. 
and you worked there for seven months. So what was it like? You said you were nervous. What was it like at the job? Like, how did you eventually get to a point where you were able to pivot to this higher paying job? Well, during my first few months there, I just was learned the, the main thing I really had to learn because I knew the basics of Google Ads, how to structure an account and maintain it. They taught me some extra stuff that they did, particularly um, with the clients they had. And a main thing I did was just focus on pacing, making sure that all the accounts are spending um, appropriately. That's a big thing. Um, when I first came on, they handed me about $70,000 a month in uh, budgets. I was super nervous, but when you speak to the people you're working with, they, they show you how they do it. It's, you realize it's not that difficult, you know? So after that training and my time there, learning how to communicate with clients, um, setting their expectations and uh, making sure I don't set myself up to fail when it comes to performance with their accounts, learning that, those intricate details, I think uh, it's one of the biggest things about this job. But the reason I left there is because they focused on uh, clients in the retail industry that were focused more on lead generation. So getting people to come to the store. I got into digital marketing for myself because I knew if I learned this skill, I could use it for other things I wanted to do in my life. So I want to start my own e-commerce brand in whatever business I want to do. I'm definitely going to be using advertising. So getting this skill, learning it and getting paid for it, it sounded you know, great. And that's why I took the course. And uh, that's ultimately why I decided to leave. I wanted to get more into the e-commerce space and see uh, what it's like for businesses that sell online. So that's, that's, yeah, you just said so much awesome stuff, guys. One of the things I, I talk about, um, and I'm going to actually make a video about this, is the fact that no matter what you want to do online, you will need digital marketing. If you want to be an affiliate marketer, if you want to do e-commerce, if you want to do drop shipping, you're going to need to run ads. So it makes sense to learn them first and get a job like you're doing so you have now you have a foundational income to support yourself while you're actually being trained in this skill set which is yeah which is really unbelievable so um but also i like to speak to the fact that you just i mean you have this you had this option so you're working at this job you like the job right yeah i did like the job the people there were great everyone there was awesome they actually like the week before i left they flew me out to air the phoenix it was my first time being on a plane and i had to give presentations to the different members there and it was, it was all around just good experience just to have that uh life experience of presenting google ads and flying cross country i've never been that far in my life so yeah it's pretty cool that is that's really great man i didn't realize that i mean that speaks yeah. to the culture in this industry that i really like um, and so they were cool with you leaving. They understood. Obviously, there were. It sounds like there were no hard feelings. They yes, actually, I. Like, my manager. He was like a. He was five years older than me. He was like twenty five, but he understood. He understood what I wanted, and um, th they definitely got more than what they paid for because I I gave my everything to that job because I was just trying to make sure I did the best I could. So, but they were cool. They all were cool about it. That is that is so great, man. And um. I mean, the fact like, well, we'll get into the next job in a moment. I just kind of want to walk through because when I interviewed you before, you were just starting out. Now, obviously, you've left that job. So day to day, what like how did you like at what point do you think you started to feel comfortable? Like, was it like a month in? Was it like two weeks in? I think it was about two months in I, where I really started to feel comfortable once I got on those first like client meetings like by myself, talking to the client. And um, once they just, once I exited that phase where I'm shadowing somebody to really see how they go about working, once I exited that and kind of just um, was on my own and I felt like more inclusive with the team and just, if I had a problem, I could just talk to one of my team members and they could help me out or I could talk to my manager. So that was awesome. when I really felt comfortable. Absolutely. And did you find like once you're in the account, so the people I know people are wondering about this, you're, ma you're managing ads for other companies, a lot of responsibility. When you were actually in the accounts yourself, did you find your mind just kind of took over and was kind of like seeing things and like, oh, I need to adjust this. I need to move that. And, you know, it became kind of intuitive. Yeah, it does. It becomes kind of it really does become intuitive. Like is the more you get to learn the account, the more time you spend with it and what's um important to that account and what makes it perform you kind of just know it just it just takes time and plus like when you're taking on 
older accounts, the person that had it before you, usually they'll tell you, they give you a whole breakdown of like what's going on with the account, what's their main uh, campaigns that run the most, they give the most conversions and stuff like that. They'll give you a, a back history of what's going on. So you're not just coming in blind, not knowing anything. That's that's really that's actually, you know, I, I when I got my first agency job, I remember they handed me a hundred thousand a month, similar to you. And my um my supervisor, who was the VP, he did the same. Like he, you know, he said, This is yeah. this account, you know, this one needs a little more attention, this one, you know. Yeah. That. So you definitely, I mean, getting that kind of support, getting that training, getting that experience is like again, you know, there's these poor kids are paying fifty thousand dollars a year to not learn anything, and you actually got paid to get trained up to the point or you could get a new job. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about how you actually went about getting this new job while you were already working remotely? Um, okay, so I knew that at my current company, I wasn't gonna learn what I wanted to learn e-commerce wise, because, just because of the businesses themselves and the clients that they handled. So I, w I wanted to stay there actually, but I just wanted to see what was what else was out there. So I started applying for different jobs at the beginning of January. And, you know, I got a lot of emails back. I got a lot of interviews. I, I think I had about like six, seven interviews. It was crazy because, you know, before when you're getting out that first resume, you know, getting one interview or just getting someone to hit you back, you're like, what? You know, because you did all this work by yourself. But afterward, I got so many different um, responses um, until I found this company. I focused primarily on e-commerce clients and um, they were just looking for someone that had had experience with someone who managed accounts at scale. And pretty much I had that experience after my seven months there. And uh, because of the different type of clients that they have, you know, um, that work with e-commerce, um, they use Shopify. The clients that we had used um, custom built uh, websites. So now I get to learn more about what's uh, people are doing in terms of drop shipping and stuff like that with this company. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guys. I mean, I really want to highlight this right here. There's a lot of, you know, you, you can help address and, you know, dispel a few myths about the job market, because I mean, you're 20 years old, you don't have a college degree and you only had seven months of experience in your first job. So, and yet you were very in demand. You know, you were very sought after for this position. It sounds like a lot of companies were interested in you. Did you have yeah. any other other companies that got close to an offer or that you might have been interested in? Um, I got to the second round, I think two or three companies. Uh, one was one that accepted me for a previous previous internship I had that I declined because I had got my first job. Um, and the other one was my current company now. But I feel like I got pretty far in the process. I feel like um, you, you get past the part where they're just really trying to ask questions to see if you know what you're talking about. And then it, it goes into more questions about like, are you going to fit in with the team? Right. And, and you, yeah. And these were, these were like, these were all of the similar pay range as the one you have now? Yes. They're all the similar pay range. Okay. So just, just, to, just to clarify you guys, he's at the $70,000 a year. And I, if you're, you guys are in high school or you're in college, you don't understand like salaries. I just, I, I wish I could like take you aside for 30 minutes and teach you about salaries. <laughs> Most college graduates are making like $30,000 a year, like 15 to $17 an hour, basically minimum wage because they have absolutely no marketable skills. And if they get up to 40,000 or 50,000, that's a big deal. That's like, a huge deal. And it usually takes a year or two for somebody to get, you can actually look at statistics. Maybe I'll show you in another video. Like they call about mid career. You can look at the statistics of college graduates. You see most of them, again, they start out working jobs. They could have gotten without a degree. We're making very little. And by mid career is when they hit this mark, 70,000 mid career guys means like 10, 15 years into yeah. your career. And yet Kishon has done this and he can't even drink legally. <laughs> <laughs> that was a running joke when i was at uh at my last company because everybody you know when they go out on uh, these company-wide events they get together as teams and they drink i'm sitting here i'm 20 they're all like joking on me like oh my god this kid is so young it was, <laughs> it was weird it was weird and like it's kind of cool because it, it's just i don't know it was weird it is it's what's well, funny i'm sure you you know they have a lot of uh you know 
a lot of affinity towards you because you're young and but you're also I mean you're just an outlier guys this is just like, like I said most bright people go to college it's just what's expected it's what's pushed and so it really is a rare situation for them to see someone like you everybody who's like you and we'll talk about that in a minute like your friends they are all in college building debt they're not working. They're not learning anything. And so that's why you were so rare in the, in the group. It's why it's such an opportunity for people who do take their own path. Um, and here's the other thing I wanted to tell you guys. So who are you working with at this new company? I'm working with Nick, uh, Nicholas Battle. All, all of you in the course should know him. I'm working with him, which is crazy. When I figured out I was working with him, I was like, wow, that's crazy. It's, it's weird how the circle just continues. Like I've worked with a um, I've worked with someone from the course in every job I've had, including internships. And it's, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Yeah. Yeah, guys. One of the things you're going to find, and again, I don't, I didn't expect this when I started the course back in 2016 is that now that so many people have taken my course that there is a network. Like I did, again, I don't, yeah. I didn't intend this, but people from my course work at so many different agencies across the country. And I actually have another another person that just got hired who lives in Georgia, who uh, I just there, there's two people from my course at another company called Hawk Media. And I'm actually going to interview David after I talk to you. But um, Nick work, Nicholas Battle, for you guys watching, who aren't in the course, is my PPC coach. And if you're in the course, you guys know Nick. So I thought it was awesome to see that uh, Keishon and Nick are working together. And another student of mine, Rainier, who took the course a while ago, he's like. Nick's boss. Yep. yep. <laughs> so right. he's my boss too. We're on the same team. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so what are you actually doing at this new job? At this new job, um, they do things in teams, right? So and they call it growth teams. So basically they have a, a Google buyer and a Facebook buyer along with a growth strategist and then a, um, <clears throat> a creative, uh, but at this new job, I'm going to be managing uh, the different Google ads accounts, focusing primarily on shopping ads. And of course, we're going to be using a different, uh, different types of categories within Google ads, but mo mainly most of my time is going to be spent in shopping. So. Awesome, man. And, and do you know the kind of budgets you're going to be working with? Um, not as of yet. They haven't handed me any accounts. I'm still going through the onboarding process where they're just teaching me how they do things as a company and, uh, the different uh, ways they, they've given me a lot of insight on how to communicate with clients and managing that relationship. Cause I'm, I know I'm going to have a lot more meeting with clients in this new role I have. Uh, so yeah, I'm still in that uh, learning process. Sure. Yeah. And we'll do another one of these interviews when you've, uh, when you've, when you've had some time to spend there and, and, and that is, you know, people often ask about client facing and I say, guys, you know, I mean, you don't have to be a present, you don't have to be like yeah. a, a, a movie star uh, in terms of your communication. But if you do get a little bit of training in your communication skills, it's very helpful in these jobs. I mean, you already present yourself in a pretty confident manner, especially for somebody who's 20. And I'm sure they were tuned into that when they yeah. interviewed you. Confidence, that's, a, that's, that's, that's key. I mean, the, I remember going through the course. It was that one video you gave. It was about an actor. Um, what was that video? What was, that, what was the name of that video? Brian Cranston. Yeah. Every time I had an interview, I'd watch that video like right before the interview. <laughs> you have to like, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta, when you're talking to these people, you just have to be confident in what you're doing and the experience you've gained. Yeah. And what Brian says, and you know, if you guys watch, I don't know if you watch Breaking Bad, Brian Cranston is, you know, the star of that TV show. And he had some great advice and he says, basically, he, what, what he said was more, he said, yes, be confident. But he also was like, you only have control over how you present yourself. Yeah. That's and you. you should put your all into your presentation of yourself. And then you, you, you have to like, let go basically because the, the, you have no control after that point, but you have complete control over how you present yourself. And I'm glad that it, that video was able to inspire you. Cause that's why I put it in there. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then tell us a little bit more about what your personal goal is. You said you wanted, you, you basically chose this job because you're going to get training in e-commerce. And what, what is your goal in terms of your own business? Um, my goal is to basically build my own e-commerce brand. 
and uh, eventually transitioned from my job to fully running that brand full time. So, you know, when I got into e-commerce, I was watching this YouTuber named Hayden Bowles. He was basically young, like 16, but he was like one of those guys who got into Facebook and uh, paid search really early. And he started making a lot of good money. And I, th I found it crazy. And that's when I was in uh, high school. I built my first e-commerce store and it failed because I had no money and I didn't know what I was doing, but I got sales and I felt like, wow, I can, pr I can probably do this as a job or a career or something, which eventually led to me taking your course and uh, now um, getting ready to start my own e-commerce store. So that's awesome, man. Do you, do you have a particular product you want to build? Um, this brand not, as of, not as of yet. I just know it's going to happen. You know, I'm confident it will. Um, that's so great, man. I mean, really, you guys have no, I mean, this, this, if you're watching this and you're a younger person, I really, you know, invite you to think outside the box because this is what's possible. And again, this is not happen overnight. This is not make $10,000 in 30 days. This is like, you've been, you've been at this for about a year now, right? I mean, in total, like it's, since you took the it's course. It's been about, I think it's about two years really, because it took me, um, when I got my first internship, it was supposed to be three months, but I was there five months because I just, I was too scared to leave, even though it was not, it was, it was one of those startups where you know it's not going to go anywhere. But I got to learn, I got a lot of experience. I learned a lot. I, it was fun to me, for me to just be in digital marketing and, and see like where this course could take me. So I was there for like five months. But before that, I was just going through the course. It's been about two years, I think. Yeah. So. It's definitely is, not a get rich quick thing. It's just a learn you know, real skills thing. Learn real skills and get rich slow. But I mean, yeah. you are like richer than anybody I know your age. Like seriously, I mean, I, I can't even think in my own, you know, my, the typical path for most people in this course is to work for 40,000 a year entry level, which has gone up since the pandemic. And then within about a year or two, people do transition to about 60. And most students are not quite as young as you because again, most people your age, it's just a matter of, it's just the culture. And it's unfortunate because most people get, get to me after college because then they look up and go, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I just got a sociology degree. But I don't know. You know, I'm working at Wendy's, you know. So um, uh, what, what I was going to ask you, like, what what's it like now with your friends? Like your friends are in college. Right. So like what do they think of what you're doing or, you know, has this come up at all? I don't think they really understand it. They don't really understand it. And I think it's just. I don't know. I think it's because I'm such of an outlier. They don't really think they could do it themselves, but it's not like I'm not, I wasn't even in school. I wasn't the smartest kid. It's just when, when you find something that really makes sense, like this makes sense. You learn a real skill, especially with COVID, you know, people need people to manage their ads and have knowledge of these platforms because business owners don't have time to spend all day looking in an ad account to see how much they're spending, how they should be uh, navigating where to spend their money within the account. Um, they don't have time to be building different creatives. So it just makes sense to learn this skill. And they don't teach it in college. So I feel like I, ha I haven't stressed that enough to my friends to make them understand how much of an opportunity it is. Yeah, I mean, do they, do they like congratulate you on the job? Do they? Yeah, kind of they, do like a... they do congratu congratulate me. They think I, what I'm doing is crazy, but you know, everyone has different uh um paths some people don't just want to sit in an ad account all day but you know it all depends on what they want to do it just, well, what, they don't want to what do they i'm just curious because you know i'm always curious to get into the mindset of the people who are going to college because it's like what are you doing like do you have any idea what you are doing like what are you what are your students are they do they know what they're majoring in did they they go to college because they had a specific long-term goal or is it just because their parents and everyone said they should go? I, I don't think, I think they're just going just because like, just because it just, because for most people, like for where I come from, especially being a minority, going to college is a right, is a good move to go. But the taking the chance like I took, it, it doesn't make sense for them. Like explaining that to their folks, like how I did, some people are not as lucky to have, parents as cool as mine who'd be like okay look I'm gonna take this course to try to get a career in uh 
yeah my parents said okay cool we're gonna support you and go do your thing and then as I went through it and they saw me in my internship just at my computer all day trying to learn Google ads and stuff they were like oh yeah he's doing something good but I don't think um I think it's that too just like the fear of like the people they're with and how they'll think about it and being able to show them that it's possible yeah you're absolutely right, man. I mean, there's so much of like an aspect of indoctrination and especially, I mean, the thing that's kind of, I think kind of heartbreaking is that in minority communities, college is stressed as this way out or this way yeah. to a kind of a better life. And unless you're made, you know, unless your friends are engineering majors or yeah, but really just engineering, <laughs> these days, <laughs> really just no engineering. other college major. I could, I mean, maybe you know, say I would say computer science, but you could learn coding yeah. and you don't need a degree for that. Um, yeah. it, it, people who are majoring in like, you know, anything other than these specific engineering degrees are going to graduate and they're going to end up in debt with, you know, w- with very few job options because um, employers want skills. but it's just it, it's it's a it's a level of belief that's so powerful that it's very yeah. hard to um to get outside of and it so it's really cool that you're and especially in some minority communities they feel like if you depending on how old the person is like especially that when i was talking to them about what i was doing they'll um they'll say like what if someone comes in with this degree right and they choose you over because the, they have this feeling of like especially minorities that you have to like you have to get the degree or else you're not going to be considered and it's like kind of like this uh victim mindset in my opinion because when I went to these interviews they didn't care they never once asked me even when I told them my story of like how I st- uh, talked about how I got into digital marketing right after high school and got the internship they were just impressed off that alone And they were like, oh, this guy really just wants to learn and really is hardworking. Because when you do stuff like that on your own, they see that, okay, I can can work with this. And it's just, it's that too, I think, that holds a lot of minorities back when it comes to this. Yeah, we could have a whole other conversation about that, I'm sure. Um, I actually talked about this a little bit with Nick because... You know, one of the things he noticed or people pointed this out to me, I don't make any intention to do is that I have a very diverse student body. And it's just, I mean, I don't intend that I don't have like a diversity department, <laughs> you know, just yeah. people from all different backgrounds, I think they, they feel this makes sense. And I think, you know, people, you know, like you, um, a young person who's got drive and determination, you know, maybe you take a lot of that energy you probably would have put into school, and you put it into a marketable skill instead and you know i think that that the the messaging unfortunately yeah it's it's become a level of belief and i think there is a lot of stuff you could unpack around that like in terms of it's a lot of it's about status i've actually analyzed a lot i think yeah there's a there's a projection of status onto this college thing and i actually thought to myself i said like this is like discriminatory in a way because college is so darn expensive who is going to have the hardest time paying for it People who are marginalized, minority yeah. groups, right? So why would you continue to put that on the stupid job application if somebody's, you know, w- wants to be a an office assistant? You know, it's like you're going to be filing papers and you need this degree. Um, but your story really illustrates that the skills are all that matter. Um, that's all they care about. You know that you can do the job and help support the company and help their clients make money. Yeah. Absolutely. It's pretty much pretty pretty much it. I Uh, never had a um a recruiter like any person like, oh, you only have a high school diploma. They never talked about it. They were just like, hey, you got this internship. That was the first thing they talked about. And then I'd ramble on about what I did there. They didn't care about what I did in school at all. It's it's such a it's refreshing to hear that, guys. You can really take that in if you're watching this. Um, this field in particular, and it's it's similar in other fields. I mean, there's some fields, like I said, if you're going to be a doctor, obviously, you know, people always say that to me. Like, oh, what if yeah. you're going to be a doctor? You're saying people shouldn't go to college. Like, yeah, you go to college to be a doctor, yeah. but you know how few people become doctors. Like you're watching this, you're probably not going to be a doctor. I'm like so confident because it's like 2% of the population. Like statistically, I looked this up because like 4 million people a year graduate college. And you know how many doctors come out of medical school every year? It's like, 20,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like crazy. 
Hold on, guys. I, I paused uh, our interview for a minute because I, as I said that number, it kind of sounded. I wanted to double check it, fact check it, and it's true, guys. I mean, really put that in effect. Twenty or twenty five thousand medical students a year graduate, which also shows you just how valuable doctors are and how rare. But then you got four million college students graduating with their sociology degree and their political science degree. Then they go on to work at a, you know, in an office filing papers. Um, it's, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's crazy. Um, yeah. but as you were saying, I, yeah, what were you saying? Actually, I actually have a friend working, um, she's interning at a law firm and all she's doing is like pushing papers and stuff. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Is she in law school? Um, she's studying to become a lawyer. She's, uh, what are they called? She's studying to become a divorce lawyer. And right now she's interning for a law firm and she's like the, the head desk woman. She just does paperwork for the lawyers. By the way, guys, this is, this could be a whole other video. I probably will be big. Just understand what internships usually are in every other field other than digital marketing. Okay. You're it's grunt work. And even if you watch, like, um, I don't have any experience in the medical professional. I have relatives who are doctors, but like, if you watch Grey's Anatomy, um, which I got hooked on. It's a, it's totally crazy, like medical <laughs> drama. Um, it's a lot like what you're talking about with, with this, your friend who's studying to be a lawyer. Interns are typically just given the worst jobs to do. Um, and in other fields, it may even be just like getting coffee or just doing stuff. There's nothing to do with what the actual job is. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, colleges say, oh, there's an internship here. You know, I, I like works. I had an internship when I was in college. And I remember I was working at Fox News believe it or not, when it was just starting and I got an internship in their sports department and I was so excited. Now, what were they, what did they have me doing? Now, I'm paying for college at this point. And by the way, the other interns are like at community colleges or aren't in college at all. I'm the only person paying the crazy tuition. What did I do in that job? They had me logging tapes. I'm saying so that means you're watching oh, wow. videotapes and you're just like writing down this happened, that happened or you're grabbing the coffee or something. You're not doing anything valuable. It's like that in almost every field, except digital marketing. This is where you get an internship and they're not just like, hey kid, you get, get us your coffee and you know file this paper. They're like, we need you to help with this actual account. Yep. And that's one of the really exciting things about digital marketing as well, which is why, why I push it so hard. And you know, obviously your internship, you said it was enough to impress somebody. Yep. No. Um, so yeah, man. And um, uh, we're going to wrap it up in just a little bit, but what, what does your family think? What do your parents think at this point? They are extremely proud, super proud. Um, yeah, they're just, they think what I'm doing is awesome. They're just like, a, they, they saw me when I was just trying to figure out this stuff on my computer. And the day I told them, hey, I wanted to do this. They're just so proud that I was able to make it happen. So, yeah. That's wonderful, man. That's moving to me because because they they you know they had the courage to support you doing something a little different and they got to see your whole process. Yeah. So that's um that's it moves me. It moves me, man. Cause I, I wish there were more stories like this because it's very inspiring. So guys, if you're watching this and you're, you know, whatever your age, even if you're my age, you're in your 40s, <laughs> you should be inspired yeah. by by uh by what's possible. And you know, um you know, I'm very happy that your parents are so, so supportive. I, I'm so like this literally, okay, I'll be doing YouTube. Pro I mean, you know, I don't know if I'll be doing YouTube in 10 years, probably. But I'll like hit you up when you're 30. <laughs> and we'll be like, what did you accomplish in 10 years having skipped college? I mean, I just like to bring, you know, before we finish up, just back to this point, the thing that excites me so much about skipping college, guys, you don't understand how much energy and time is wasted in high school and college. You are in a four-year head start on your peers. And didn't you also say that you're saving money? Yes, I am. I am a saver. So everything I get, I like, I just, I, I basically spend the same amount of money I was spending when I was at Chick-fil-A because I understand the opportunity I've been given and it just makes sense to do so. So that's it. This is, is your you're role model. I mean, seriously, this is like you're doing everything right, because like what is the biggest problem people complain about is that they don't budget right. They yeah. put too much on credit and um, and then, you know, then they go into debt for school and you're doing the complete opposite. So so that's great. Um, awesome, man. Well, do you do you have any final words for anybody watching the video? Um, don't be afraid to take chances. 
And to me, this is not even a chance. It just makes sense, especially after COVID. This, it makes sense to do this. It makes sense. If you have an interest in doing anything online with advertising, it makes sense to learn these skills and get a job in it because it's just going to make you better and so set you up. Because, you know, a lot of people, they get jobs and they do something for 40 years, but never do it for themselves. With this, you can actually do it for yourself. So that is that is very well said, guys. That is, by the way, this is this is the path of most of my students take. They go from knowing nothing to learning to interning to entry level to like a second job. And at that point, they typically some people want to freelance, get their own clients, build their own agency. And they go in that direction. Other people, and I've had other students, I haven't interviewed them, but maybe I'll bring them on the channel, who've created their own online business, whether they're doing affiliate marketing, whether they're doing e-commerce. And I, I think that's a really good point. Then it's their business. And they're doing it the right way because I said, you spent two years of prep time for your e-commerce business, you were going to have a successful e-commerce business versus somebody that you know, buys into the hype of e-commerce and like you know, blows all their money. And because because they think they can they can learn it and do it in you know thirty days or something, which I yeah. don't think is is realistic. And the insight, like just like working at these companies, the insight you gain on like how communication is done between different managers, how corporate structures work, and like how stuff like having insight on that, especially as young as I am, is crazy. Because now I understand like I have an idea of how companies work, well at least in digital advertising agencies. Absolutely, man. I mean, you're going to be, you're going to have opportunities. The, the thing is, what I said, you'll be, if you want to stay in this path, you will be a manager by the time your friends are graduating college. And that's like, you're going to end up like, you're going to end up, if you wanted to go that route, you would be the person who's doing the hiring. And you're the one who's going to see the resume from the person that, that has their degree and no experience and be like, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself? What's your experience? And then the person will be like, well, I got my degree in sociology or I got my degree in marketing. <laughs> Great. Do you know anything about Google ads? What's Google ads? You know, so and then you, the guy without the degree, is going to be the doing the one, the, the interviewing, which excites me. Um, you guys you have to understand, like, <clears throat> before I wrap this up, I, I just met a guy here in Koh Samui who's from America, who I'm going to interview, who's like he, he didn't even graduate high school, but he's very bright. And he ended up working at Apple because oh, wow. he's bright. And so if you're bright, that's like what I tell people with the whole college thing is like it's like Lisa Simpson and Hermione from Harry Potter. This is my, this, I'm trying to make this analogy as simple as possible. If Lisa Simpson or Hermione, if she was human, like not a witch, <laughs> if they didn't go to college, the conventional thinking is like, oh my God, Lisa Simpson would end up living in the gutter. That's crazy. Somebody who's that smart is going to be successful. <laughs> They're going to get a good job. They're going to yeah. start their own company. And this is what you're seeing with Sean and all my other students who skip college. So I'm saying you can do better. Then wasting four years of your life and going into debt and studying a bunch of nonsense. Um, you can potentially make $50,000, $70,000 a year, realistically, if you put in the time and go your own way. So thanks, man. Thanks for sharing your, uh, your story with everybody. Can, uh, can people reach out to you on LinkedIn if they have any questions? Absolutely. Definitely hit me up on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Awesome, man. All right, Keishon, have a great time at your job. Good luck with everything and we'll talk soon. All right. See you.